Do you believe Americans are better off than they were four years ago? I believe in the ambition, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And that is why I imagine and have actually a plan to build what I call an opportunity economy. Because here's the thing. We know that we have a, a shortage of, of homes and housing, and the cost of housing is too expensive for far too many people. We know that young families need support to raise their children, and I intend on extending a tax cut for those families of $6,000, which is the largest child tax credit that we have given in a long time. My opponent, on the other hand, his plan is to do what he has done before which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. We're doing tariffs on other countries. Other countries are going to finally, after 75 years, pay us back for all that we've done for the world. Uh, look, we've had a terrible economy because inflation has, which is really known as a country buster, it breaks up countries. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. We were at 21 percent, but that's being generous because many things are 50, 60, 70, and 80 percent higher than they were just a few years ago. They have, and she has, destroyed our country with policy that's insane, almost policy that you'd say they have to hate our country. President Trump, you've often touted that you were able to kill Roe v. Wade. Last year, you said that you were proud to be the most pro-life president in American history. For 52 years, they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. And through the uh, genius and, and heart and strength of six Supreme Court justices, we were able to do that. Now, I believe in the exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. I believe strongly in it. Ronald Reagan did also. The, the majority of Americans believe in a woman's right to make decisions about her own body, and that is why in every state where this issue has been on the ballot, in red and blue states both, the people of America have voted for freedom. Vice President Excuse Harris, me, I have you. to respond. Another lie. It's another lie. I have been a leader on IVF, which, which is fertilization. You should ask. Will she allow abortion in the eighth month, ninth month, seventh month? Come on. Okay, would you do that? Why don't you ask why, her that question? Why don't you answer That's the, the problem. question? Donald Trump was fired by 81 million people. So let's be clear about that. And clearly he is having a very difficult time processing that. But we cannot afford to have a president of the United States who attempts, as he did in the past, to upend the will of the voters in a free and fair election. And I'm going to tell you that I have traveled the world as Vice President of the United States, and world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. I have talked with military leaders, some of whom worked with you, and they say you're a disgrace. And when you then talk in this way, in a presidential debate, and deny what over and over again are court cases you have lost because you did, in fact, lose that election. It leads one to believe that perhaps we do not have in the candidate to my right the temperament or, or the ability to not be confused about fact. That's deeply troubling, and the American people deserve better. I'll give you one minute to respond, Mr. President. Let me just tell you about world leaders. Victor Orban, one of the most respected men, they call him a strong man, he's a, he's a tough person, smart, prime minister of Hungary. They said, why is the whole world blowing up? Three years ago it wasn't. Why is it blowing up? He said, because you need Trump back as president. We're playing with World War III, and we have a president that we don't even know if he's — where is our president? We don't even know if he's a president. And, and just to clarify they here — They threw him out of a campaign like a dog. We don't even know. Is he our president? But we have a president, Mr. president that doesn't know he's alive. I want to get your thoughts on uh, support for Ukraine in this moment, but also as commander-in-chief, if elected, how would you deal with Vladimir Putin, and would it be any different from what we're seeing from President Biden? Well, first of all, it's important to remind the former president, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. I believe the reason that Donald Trump says that this war would be over within 24 hours is because he would just give it up. Someone who cares about you and is not putting themselves first. I intend to be a president for all Americans. 
and focus on what we can do over the next 10 and 20 years to build back up our country by investing right now in you, the American people. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? He's going to talk about immigration a lot tonight, even when it's not the subject that is being raised. And I'm going to actually do something really unusual, and I'm going to invite you to attend one of Donald Trump's rallies, because it's a really interesting thing to watch. And what you will also notice is that people start leaving his rallies early out of exhaustion and boredom. And I will tell you, the one thing you will not hear him talk about is you. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. And the people that do go, she's busing them in and paying them to be there and then showing them in a different light. So she can't talk about that. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country and look at what's happening to the towns all over the United States. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. The people on television say my dog was taken and used for food. I'm not taking this from but television. But the people on I'm television the saying their dog was eaten by the people that went there. Again, the Springfield city manager says there's no evidence of that. Vice we'll President Harris, out. I'll let you respond to the rest of what you've heard. <laughs> you talk about extreme. <laughs> Why do you believe it's appropriate to weigh in on the racial identity of your opponent? I don't, and I don't care. I don't care what she is. I don't care. No, I mean, all I can say is I read where she was not black, that she put out, and I'll say that. And then I read that she was black, and that's okay. Either one was okay with me. That's up to her. I mean, honestly, I think it's a, a tragedy that we have um, someone who wants to be president who has consistently, over the course of his career, attempted to use race to divide the American people. You know, I do believe that the vast majority of us know that we have so much more in common than what separates us, and we don't want this kind of approach that is just constantly trying to divide us, and especially by race. Millions of people let in, and all over the world, crime is down, all over the world except here. Crime here is up and through the roof. Harris. Well, I think this is so rich, <laughs> coming from someone who has been prosecuted yeah. for national security crimes, economic crimes, election interference, has been found liable for sexual assault, and his next big court appearance is in November at his own criminal sentencing.